Good evening everybody. Thank you very much for joining in. This is ninth in the series and today we are going to speak about one of the forms of the foreign exchange hedging which is known as fair value hedging program. Sometimes corporate treasurer refer fair value hedging program as balance sheet hedging program as well. So today we are going to speak about the entire details of how a treasurer how a treasurer working in a in a company which may be export oriented which can be which can be an import which can be an import oriented takes care of his balance sheet takes care of the takes care of the hedging of the foreign exchange receivable and payable using fair value hedging program. Well about me I am Rahul Magan working as a corporate treasurer in EXL Services India which is an Indian counterpart of a US Nasdaq listing firm EXL Service Holding INC. At the same time, I'm working as a trainer in various forums across the world, and also acting as a business consultant in predominantly in Asia. I am also speaking for roughly 26 global forums across the world. And my first book, which is my first book, which is already published in New York, and second is scheduled to be published in Australia in, in end of year 2014. So today, I'm reiterating that we're going to speak about one form of foreign exchange hedging, which is known as fair value hedging program. So as a corporate as a corporate treasurer, what do you mean by fair value hedging program? What do you mean by fair value hedging? Fair value hedging refers to the hedging of all receivables and payables in your books which is subject to revaluation. Take a very simple example. What do you mean by revaluation? The most diplomatic definition for a corporate treasurer, what do you mean by revaluation is revaluation is nothing conversion of foreign currency into local currency. And what do you mean by translation? Translation refers to conversion of local currency into foreign currency, which is which is reverse of revaluation. So once you console your books, how we do it? First you run the first you run the reval, you convert foreign currency into local currency then your entire books would be local currency and then you convert your local currency books into your foreign currency books which is also known as consolidation and you pass this gain loss in one part of your balance sheet which is known as CTA. CTA refers to cumulative translation adjustment account. CTA is always lies in balance sheet. It do not hit your it do not hit your PL account. Take a very simple example. It is it, it is do not hit your PL account, rather it hit your balance sheet account. So CTA is one form which hit your OCI. OCI stands for other comprehensive income. Now how how the fair value hedging program works? Predominantly fair value hedging program is done by two companies. It is applicable for both of the companies, one for exporters and one for importers. And it also works for a company which is doing both of the stuff. Take an example like Apple, which is doing exporting, however, doing first importing. So today we are going to speak about how a corporate treasurer effectively can take a fair value hedge which would help him to mitigate the gains and losses arise in his profit and loss account which is subject to revaluation. I am reiterating the fact that fair value hedging means the hedging of all hedging of net exposure of your of your foreign currency asset and liabilities lying in your different lying in the books of your different companies. The fair value hedging program is applicable to those companies who have the foreign currency receivable and foreign currency payables However, their functional currency is different. Now, I am going, going to take a very simple example. What do you mean by functional currency? Functional currency refers to a, refers to a currency of books. Take, a, take, take an example of Infosys. Infosys is an, is an Indian company. So, Infosys functional currency, currency is in INR. Take an example of Apple. Apple is an American company. So, Apple functional currency is US dollars. Take an example of Vodafone. Vodafone is a British company, so Vodafone functional currency is GBP. Second is known as reporting currency. Reporting currency refers to a currency in which you consolidated your books. Now take a very simple example, Infosys. Infosys functional currency is in INR, however Infosys always reports books using IFRS 
Well, for Influential Infosys is the only company in IT space start from the scratch who started reporting their financials from in IFRS. The first IT company in India who started reporting using IFRS and now other IT companies are following that. So Infosys books is in dollar, is in IRA because the functional currency is in IRA. However, Infosys is reporting it books in dollar terms. So Infosys functional currency is INR and however Infosys reporting currency is in dollar. What if, if Infosys would report their books as in GBP? Then Infosys functional currency would be GBP. Here Infosys is taking a conversion of USD INR with which goes into translation and so is this GBP INR. Now in this before to start in detail, I would like to reiterate the fact that we are going to cover today we are going to cover fair value hedging from exporter point of view. It means there are two as I earlier said fair value hedging can be done for, for both one for exporters and one, one for importers but today we are going to do for exporters and in exporters we are going to take the examples of a predominant company in the world of inf inf information technology which is known as Infosys. Now as I said, fair value hedging is predominantly divided into two parts. One is for exporters, one is for importers. And it covers the third party also which is known as exporter and importer like Apple. Apple who first importing the products from China and Taiwan by and putting the stamp of Apple in New York and selling it at the, at, at, the, at the name of Apple. But Microsoft can also, all, all, all also be linked with, with the, that brand as well. Third. So we are going to cover exporters here and in exporters we are going to cover an example of Infosys. Now what is Infosys? Infosys is an IT company, IT stands for information technology company. At the same time Infosys is IT and ITES company who is giving all sort of services, application development and maintenance, software solutions, software coding, product development, each and everything business processing, outsourcing services, transmission, transmission services and we all know that the top line of Infosys is roughly 8.5 billion dollars. Now this 8.5 billion dollars is having various, is, is further divided into various currencies. However, Infosys cannot report the financials in all the currencies. So what they do, they convert their currencies into dollar terms. Because we all know Infosys is a company, Infosys is one of, one of, is one of the companies who is having operations across the world. Now take an example, Infosys must, must, must be having a, their receivables in dollars, JPY, Chinese Yuan, GBP, Euro, Canadian Dollar, Australian Dollar, you are uh, Swiss Franc and respective others. Now these are the currencies which are lying in the books of Infosys. Please be note that in fair value hedging is predominantly important for those IT companies, ITES, IT and ITES and those exporters and importers who have foreign currency or sector liabilities in the books like Jindal's. At the same time, fair value hedging is must for companies who are working on transfer pricing method. Transfer pricing stands for, for your uh, in, inter-company method. When you have a parent company sitting across, across the, uh, a parent company sitting outside India and he is reimbursing your cost. Take an example, you have Genpact, you have Accenture, you have Sapient, you have Cognizant. All these companies are working on inter-company transfer pricing model. When the particular parent sits outside India, however, the, the domestic company, which is taking an example of Cognizant India, who is doing work on behalf of Cognizant US, and Cognizant US is reimbursing the cost for Cognizant, in, Cognizant India, and Cognizant India take a forward contract based upon that dollar that 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 dollar receivable which they are going to they are going to get from Congress and US. That is an intercompany transaction. The actual AR arising from this AR stands for account receivable or the AP in the books is hedged, which is known as fair value hedging. Please be remember of the fact that fair value hedging is having various components in place and this series is going to be uh, divided into further five parts. Today we are going to shoot the first part of fair value hedging. 
Now, fair value hedging would also cover the offshore treasury market, the onshore treasury market. It covers RBI regulation. It covers uh, it covers the regulations of of other 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 uh, treasury market which fall in the, under the jurisdiction of Singapore, Hong Kong, New York, London, and and all. Predominantly today, Indian corporates are taking fair value hedging in offshore treasury market, which is Singapore, London, New York, and others. Now, take an example. If today I, for a simplicity, I assume one million. I assume that each and everything is is one million. Or, or, or take an example, hundred million. There is hundred million AUD in the books of Infi, hundred million CAD, hundred million dollar. Your JPY is uh, hundred million. JPY hundred million. Your CNY hundred million. GBP hundred million. CHF hundred million. Audit Aussie to dollar rate is 0.89, which is Aussie dollar. CAD to dollar, sorry, dollar to CAD, which is uh, roughly 1.07 per dollar, and uh, dollar and dollar to INR assume 60-50, JPY assume 102, CNY stands say 6, GBP stands 1.69. In fact, it is 1.68 now. CHF is I think 0.85. This is in dollar terms. We assume that Infosys is, is not a, is not an INR company. However, Infosys is a dollar company where the functional currency is in dollar. If the functional currency is in dollar, the dollar is stable which Infosys is having is not subject to any revaluation because revaluation means conversion of foreign currency into local currency. Now this is out of the scope. This one Aussie dollar is equal to 0.89 dollars. 100 million Aussie, Aussie dollar would be roughly 89 million dollars. One dollar is equal to 1.07 CAD. 100 million dollar would be equal to 107 million CAD. No, this would be reverse. You have CAD. Uh, one dollar is equal to 1.07 CAD. And uh, you have CAD, so your hundred million dollars would be 1.07. Whatever you would get. JPY, you are having hundred million JPY, so you would divide hundred million by 102. You will get a number. You get hundred million, you get six GBP. You have hundred million GBP, and you have to convert into dollars. So you have hundred million into 1.69 euro. You have hundred million euro into say 1.35 CHF which is 100 million euro into 0.85. These all you would convert in dollars. I assume these are only receivable items in the books of Infosys. They are not the payable items in the books of Infosys. So once you net up, assume you would get 700 million dollars. Which once you will convert this foreign currency liability into into your dollar into your dollar liability, but this liability is subject to revaluation. Revaluation means if the closing assume the closing of July 14 for Aussie dollar is 0 0.90. Assume and the closing of June 14 for Aussie dollar, I take it too late. I assume that 85 and it is 0.92. If it was 0.85, now that that turned out to be 0 0.90, it means it is a reval gain. If it was 0.92 and then turned out to be 0.90, it means you have a reval loss. Now who will who will take this chance to sell this and who will take the chance whether this whether the receivable would be having revaluation gain or they would be having revaluation losses. Not to, to 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 basically to mitigate such risk. If I would say as a corporate treasurer, what do you mean by fair value hedging? I would say the most dipl diplomatic definition of fair value hedging means the hedging technique which you are doing to protect yourself from the revaluation gain and losses. I am again reiterating the fact that that reval that fair value hedging means the hedging taken to protect yourself from revaluation gains and losses. Now, in this. Infosys will have to target the offshore treasury market like we already discussed. They would target Singapore, they would target New York, they would target London, they would target Australia. In Australia, they would target predominantly Sydney and Melbourne and in Japan. 
in Japan they will target Tokyo. Well, they can target Dubai as well, but but Dubai Dubai being is 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 not a very is not a very big market when it comes to fair value hedging. 